All right, guys, welcome back to another Grow the Earth. Today, we're going to be talking about seed starting. Now, I know that seed starting it kind of has a special place in our heart because it's the exciting part of our year to where we start our seeds and we start thinking about our garden and we start looking at all the growth that's happening and all those things. But depending on your area, starting your seeds indoors may be a I won't say a waste of your time, but it's a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. Now, I didn't just willy-nilly come up with this idea or come to this conclusion because it's actually what I've seen going on in my garden that has brought me to this. All of our garden you see here behind us was actually planted out in bed. We did no pre-starts inside. We did, we did nothing with uh, the little containers or anything like that. This was all planted in ground and grown from seed in ground. Now for us, we did the whole seed starting every year. Had our little bitty pots, we started them inside. We had a little mock greenhouse inside that we put all of our seeds in, watered them with lights and the whole nine yards. And then once they got to a certain size, we would start bringing them out and taking them back in for a couple hours every day to get them used to the new environment. And then we would transplant them out of our garden. Well, almost every year we would have volunteer plants. And if you don't know what volunteers are, volunteers are, let's say you have a tomato that falls to the ground that you don't realize, it gets covered up with soil. Well, the next year, some of those seeds will germinate and they will pop out of the ground. They're free plants. You didn't have to plant them, they came up. Well, we found that, like with tomatoes, the tomatoes that we had spent all this time and this energy on in growing inside in our little greenhouses and so forth, we brought them outside. When, when we put them in the ground, they would be stunted. They would just basically completely stop growing. Sometimes they would start wilting. I mean, it was just a horrible sight for the first two, possibly three weeks after planting them outside because they were in an entirely different environment. Whereas our volunteers that popped up were doing wonderful. And a lot of times those plants would outpace the ones that we had been growing and, and done all this extra activities with for at least a month. And, you know, it just came to the point of realizing that, you know, we're trying to force God's hand in a way by doing all this at a time when it's not supposed to grow, right? You're taking a plant and you're putting it in a false environment and you're growing it in a false environment and then when you bring it out into the real world, it struggles and it just, it is hanging off for dear life. Because I can't tell you how many plants that we lost in the transplant part and it just, it's not, it's something that we can avoid if we just plant straight out in the garden because those volunteer plants were outpacing and outproducing and uh, were even a stronger plant in, in many different ways, right? We had less pest on them, they, they grew faster, they grew stronger, they had stronger root systems, and it was just a wonderful thing all the way around. Now, I can only attribute this to the fact of we've had a plant that's been in a false environment and we're moving into an entirely different environment that has wind and the, the sun and all these other different components that we're trying to emulate inside of a inside of a greenhouse but you're never going to emulate them 100 percent and so we, when we bring those plants outside and we put them in the ground they're not exposed to this environment that we have no control over now don't get me wrong sea starting out in your garden is not the end all be all believe me there are plenty of things that go along with See, starting out in the garden that bring their own problems. You know, in the trade-off for all these stronger plants, you also have environmental factors that you cannot control, right? We have the wind, we have the sun, we have the rain. We have just uh, bugs, especially bugs. And whenever you're starting out in your garden, your garden soil preparation has to be good or otherwise those plants are going to suffer because of that. So, you know, you've got your, uh, you got the wind, of course, which is going to 
damage those plants as they're, as they're trying to grow. You know, you've got the sun, which is going to dry out the soil faster than it would inside because you're using artificial lights that doesn't have all the extra heat attached to it, right? You have your bugs. Now, this year, bugs were a big thing for us. We had a lot of seeds that popped up, and before they got about that tall, we had bugs that were coming in and eating them off and eating the leaves off of them and all these nice things. So believe me, it's not without its problems. Now when it comes to seed starting, if you have at least six months of grow time, you don't necessarily need to start your seeds inside. It's just an extra step that is going to have you wasting time and energy on, right? Because up north, they have to start those seeds inside because by the time they put the seed in the ground and it starts growing after the winter is gone and the, and the ground is thawed, they have a limited amount of time to get that plant to come up and to grow and to produce fruit before they run into the wall of fall to where it becomes too cold for those things to grow. But I'm down here in Texas. We grow from April through sometimes December with just our summer crops because we don't hit fall or winter until that time. So there was no reason for me to start seeds inside or do anything other than plant them straight out in the ground. Again, like I said, if you're up north and you've got a, a narrow grow window, window for your vegetables, absolutely. Start your seeds in pots, inside. You need to do that because that's what you need to do to grow your vegetables and grow your stuff out. But I see it as we are working with God and His nature and not trying to force something that is not natural, right? We're using the environment, we're using everything, and these seeds are gonna come from God's timing. Just like everything else in this world, it's all according to God's timing. And you can try and move it, and you can try and shape it to what you want, but eventually it's gonna catch up with you. You know, we have times and seasons within our life that are coming with God's timing. We can pray and we can ask for all we want, but until it's in His timing, we're just out of luck because everything is according to His will, correct? And as always, guys, I want to thank you for joining me today, for liking, subscribing, and I just want you guys to have a great day.